What's going on guys? Sin for the win here. We are back with our franchise mode as the Colorado Avalanche and here we are up at free agency. Before we get into that though, got to go over some of the winners here. Now look, there seemed to be a bit of confusion. Um, I probably didn't explain it correctly, but I saw some people guessing four people instead of just three. Um, so obviously I did a poor job of explaining it. Um, but in the midst of all that, there was one person, even though he guessed four, he guessed, he actually, he would have got a clean sweep and he actually kind of did get a clean sweep. And since I, I was the one who messed up, I'm actually going to give it to him because the ones he got right were two forwards and a defenseman, which or sorry, two forwards and the goaltender, which is the hardest combination of them to get to get. So here he is. It's Kazino O. Guessing team lead McKinnon, the league lead Sagan, and the goalie Vasilevsky. So congrats to you on the uh, clean sweep with a, maybe put an asterisk on it. But uh, if there was no one who guessed just three who got a clean sweep, there's a bunch of with two or more, but or, or two, I should say, two guesses. But he actually got all three. So um, I, I, I guess I explained it pretty poorly. So basically what you do, you're only guessing three people, uh, a forward, a defenseman, and a goaltender. Or two skaters, in a sense. One of them has to be from the team. One of them has to be for the league lead. Like a team lead, the league lead. And they, it could be a, a forward or defenseman or two forwards because the odds are worse. So basically, um, you can choose like the format. You know, you could choose McKinnon for the team lead. And then Sagan for the league lead. And then you guess who the best goaltender you think is. Um, I'll, I'll show you like winning com what winning combinations would have been. Obviously, McKinnon, Sagan... Vasilevsky, or you could have done like Makar for the team lead on defense, and then league lead, you could have done Sagan. Now, you can't do two defensemen because the odds are obviously worse, or uh, odds are better, stuff like that. So, yeah, um, only three guesses. Standard is a forward, a defenseman, one has to lead the team, the other has to lead the league, and then a goaltender. And who you think's the best, the best in the league is going to be. Or you can guess. A forward from the team who you think is going to lead and a f the, the leading forward in the league. It cannot be the same person, though. So you can't say McKinnon's going to lead the team and he's going to lead the league because if he leads the team, or, or sorry, if he leads the league in points for forwards, he's obviously going to lead the team uh, in points for forwards. So you got that. So, all right. Hopefully I explained it a bit better, made it a bit clear. I do apologize, but that's why I'm letting uh, that slide and given. Giving him credit for a clean sweep because I clearly didn't explain it well enough as, yeah, well, it's been a while. <laughs> so there we go. That's all taken care of. We are here in free agency. I've, I've spent a lot of time, yeah, like a half hour, um, looking through coaches and uh, trying to improve upon the scout pool. There's not a whole lot in the scout pool. We'll try to improve upon two different slots. It'll be a slow process for that. But into free agency we go. And uh, you guys are s seeming to like Petro. The idea of going for Petro for a few years. And I kind of like it too. Yeah, we'll have to compete with a couple teams to grab him. But it it works for us for where we're at right now. Um, before we make an offer, I'm going to take a look at a few things. Con let's go to the contract screen because it'll be a little bit more easier to do that. So, obviously, Makar is going to need an extension. Actually, let's see what he wants right now. Hello. Oof, that goes up quite a bit. Damn, I was hoping it wouldn't go up that much. Oh, Makar, why do you want so much? I don't know if waiting will do much because I think he's going to get another jump. Well, let's see what eight years is like. I was trying to get him to a pretty darn good deal here. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Uh, it's 918, which is probably fair for the guy, but it's more than I want to pay. I'm trying to trying to cheese here. At least we'll be saving some money with Cole. Now Cole. Hmm. Johnson still trade bait in a couple of years. Or next year, hopefully. Maybe we'll be able to move him then. <laughs> yeah, he was a first overall pick. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, that will be good on the right side if we do that. Left side, we obviously won't be as strong. Brody was there, but he's only an 84, or so I was considering, oh, maybe I could trade Johnson, swoop up Brody, but it'll be hard to trade Johnson on that kind of contract. Cole, you could maybe hold on to. Although, if I was going to trade one of them, I would trade Cole instead of Johnson. Yeah, that would make a lot more sense. Actually, not really, because then you'd have to play Johnson in the top six if you were going to get Brody as well. That's a lot of money to spend in free agency, and we'll have to lock him in relatively long-ish term. I don't want to just do the one-year thing and kind of cheese the game like that with these signings, especially in free agency here. Going to try to keep it a bit more realistic. Landeskog needs an extension. I, uh, you obviously hold on to him. Yeah, he wants... Well, that's not as bad. So, okay, let's let's offer him an extension now. Definitely, we're definitely gonna want Land Scott. This takes him up till he's about thirty-three. That's a that's fair. So, yeah, under eight, seven point nine for six years. Pretty good. So let's do that right there. We have to get him for because it's a little bit over. It's like nine oh five. So yeah, that's a good price for Land Scott. It is obviously a pay increase. But that is what it is. One, two, three. Okay, McKinnon only. One, two, three more years on McKinnon. So the safest for Petra Angelo would be to only do three years. But I think we're going to have to do four to make it make a bit of sense here. I think by that point we'll be fine on cap. I mean, we can, obviously you have to make moves and stuff like that here and there. McCarr is a tricky one. I didn't, don't want to pay that much. I can get him for shorter, but he's going to want a lot when he comes off in his prime. He'll want a lot anyway, but... Yeah, I might... Yeah, just might have to do it. Might have to just bite the bullet. Hmm. It's a tough call. But yeah, um, Petro, it does make sense to grab him. Especially, he'll help buy some time for Makar to get back. But at the same time, I might just play him in the top four immediately and keep Makar in the top two because he did incredible. Probably. And yeah, I think we're going to go for Halak as well because that makes sense. Also, we'll need a fourth liner. Someone was saying you should grab Hoffman, which is not a too bad of an idea. I think Don's, Don Father is going to get some stack growth, though. Joseph obviously should grow naturally a bit more. But yeah, we're still kind of lacking scoring forwards. One, two, three, four, five. That's your top six, technically, which isn't amazing. So yeah, we could use... Could use Hoffman, too. So there, therein lies the kind of... The, but the thing is, we didn't really struggle scoring last year too much. So I'm kind of like... Yeah, we got Burkowski. Oh, yeah, we have to trade him. Going to use Belmar. Yeah, we just need really need the fourth liner. Oh, yeah, we're going to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Byram in the top six. So Zadorov. We're going to... Might have someone playing Oppo side right now. Yeah, Petro does make a lot of sense still. Sorry, I'm thinking in my head. I'm kind of thinking out loud, but not really out loud because I'm. All right, let's 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 just take a look here. So I don't think Brody makes a lot of sense. So Petro, VGK, Dallas, we'd have to really compete. It'll have to almost be 10 mil for four years, which is a bit. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to go up to 10. I'm going to try to do 9.75 for four years. It's risky. We might lose him, but we ha I don't We don't, we don't want to go overboard. We will run into cap issues. We want to play it as safe as possible. So I think that's probably I think we got to save every little bit we can. I'm going to try that for Petrangelo. Although Dallas could steal him because they should be listed as a champion team. Hmm. All right, go on. 10 mil it is for four years. 
10 by 4 for Petro. Gonna have to do that. We're gonna go for Halak here as well. I really like the idea of going for him. I probably don't have to bump him up. I don't bump him up to 3 just to be safe in case someone else swoops in, but should be fine. It's only a year. That won't really matter. So right there, now we only have about 3 mil left to work with. We can't really pursue a guy like Hoffman. Not at all. So... We're going to have to, like I said, kind of trust our defense again. Or, sorry, trust our that our, you know, high-flying offense can get enough scoring to maintain. We're really trying to just improve upon our, uh... Ooh, Gaunt's is not too bad. Just trying to prove upon our defense and goaltending, essentially. Because that was a, more of the weak point last year. Here's Brandon Gaunt. It's looking good for that. Brendan, whatever, for that fourth line. Nieto's up there, but we saw him drop down. That's why his price is lower. He's like going to be like a 77. Gaunt's is not too bad. I kind of like him. He's solid defensively. He could take face-offs if need be in case of injury. Very well-rounded. Good discipline, and he's got decent aggressiveness and hitting. Good gritty player for that fourth line. And he still says fourth line, so I don't really see a reason not to grab this guy for a year. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to snag Brendan Gauntz there. And that pretty much takes care of everything, although I think I might need a depth defense, but I'm going to have to check that once more. We're obviously going for Petro. Actually, I think that'll be enough. Let me check. Gets confusing sometimes. <laughs> uh, so obviously we're counting on Byron being NHL ready. Six. There's your six. So it'll have to be someone depth from our squad. Like Zadorov being depth. I'm not using Byron as depth, obviously. And we're going to have Petrangelo. Now might be the time to make a trade, but the thing is, you can't have Gerard up in the top two. If I were to trade someone, it'd be Cole right now, and so we might want to do that. I don't necessarily want to scratch Zadorov or Cole. I could scratch Zadorov for a year. I mean, we're trying to kind of cap him out at 80. Ugh. Ooh, he's got some low discipline. Yeah. Hmm. This is really tough. This is a really tough decision. I guess we could try that. Cole is what? Defensive defenseman. Byram is a two-way. That'll be pretty good chemistry-wise. You know what? Yeah, let's try that. I am trying to stunt Zadorov to only be a top six guy. I might, he might not even be long term anyway because of that discipline. I don't, I don't need my top six guys taking a lot of penalties. That usually happens to the top two guys with tons of ice time. Damn. Okay. Well, that is what it is. We should be good forward wise now. Oops, not seven. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 plus 12. Oh, looks like we're still. No, we're missing. I can grab a third liner or another forward. Yeah, I'll probably grab a third liner here. I don't think we have any prospects coming up. Nope. Kamenev, like, he might jump, but. Mm. I mean, he's listed as fourth line, but do you trust it? Not really. Could use one of these guys, but I'd rather get an actual third liner. White's going to be depth. Comfer. We're signing the other dude. We're using Belmar, but yeah, Burakovsky needs to be moved. So speaking of which, let's move him now. See if a team wants. Oh, Boston wants his rights. Okay, I got no problem training with you guys. What do we want in return here? Pick from obviously, well, obviously a pick. We get a second. Looks like we should be able to get a second. There's no way we get a f no. There's zero chance we get a first. But we should easily get a second here. 
I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to add in another pick here. I don't think. Just a bit low. Wow, we're actually really close with a two and a three. Hmm. Okay. If we're that close with a two and a three, we could send back a junk prospect. If I can remember which ones are junk. Well, there's a bottom six. Unsigned. There you go. That should do it. That should be enough. Yep. Ah, uh, hell yeah. That's a great return for uh, a tendered guy. So there we go. We got a two and a three now for this coming year. Now, obviously, Boston could be a great team, but they could also flop. They didn't do great. They missed the playoffs last year, so you never know. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We actually have max picks for this year. Um, we're going to shift some picks around to gain better picks. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the cards have in, <clears throat> have in store for us. But I think that's most of the moves we're going to make right now. We will need another third line guy because we just we did move Burkowski. So let's see. I want to get a pretty good third line guy if I can. Um, Coil's a bit too expensive. All right, that's a bit too low. Damn. Ah, uh, I would really like Coil because we know he's an 83. Listed as a second liner, sure. We can go for something like for a leak though, for a couple years. He should be a third liner. And he's not bad offensively either. He can kind of fill a lot of roles. And it was the right side that we needed, so that's kind of a call right there. I won't I don't need to move him up too much. Let's do three and a half for a couple years. Don't worry about the cap. We'll be we'll be towards the edge of it, but we'll be okay. And we will have plenty of cash next year to be able to pay for everyone as well. So let's do that for Froleek. Probably should have done one year, but eh, two years will be fine. As I said, we'll be we'll be okay. So let's let's see if everyone signs after that. We're gonna have coaches, scouts, bunch of people messaging us here in the next couple days. Um, okay, we got the associate coach, sweet A minus associate coach for eight years because he's an A minus. That's why I got him for eight years. We got, wow, we got a oh yeah, he's only a B. Never mind. Come on, head coach. Yes. No, that's the goalie coach. <laughs> Come on. Uh, that's a scout. Oh, that's Ron Hainsey. <laughs> um, there we go. We got we got our head coach. I went with a Francois. Just because he was younger, has a better track record. All right. So I got him for four years. Damn it. <laughs> I tried to get this guy for the uh, for the head coach job. I might try again because he's a he was a freaking A minus. He might actually accept as long as he's not getting other offers. That's always a, a tricky thing. But usually they will accept a second time. The players haven't even ex uh, answered back. But that's all we need is the AHL head coach. I'm gonna go for him again, even though he's like the reason I'm going for him because he's got good teaching. He's a good one to start building around. Okay, now a team's interested in him. I'm going to have to bump him up a lot. If I'm going to get him. I might not get him, but I'm going to try anyway because cap doesn't matter. And he's got good teaching. Um, and a decent coach influence, too. He might accept because he's probably getting a head coach role. There we go. <laughs> An NHL head coaching role. I'm offering him freaking AHL one for eight years. Kind of got in the habit of doing this for AHL or other positions like the associate coach if they're really good to try to lock him in for a long, 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 long time because it's very annoying dealing with the coaching system in this game. It's it's severely unpolished and, you know, when you try to re-sign them when you're allowed to re-sign them, they never accept. But then you come to this uh, in the free agency, you offer them similar deals and they're like, oh, totally, yeah, I'll join your team. So it's just... It's very uh, annoying to deal with, and again, look at look what you have to do just to get him to even like think about. Yeah, I can pay him more than my head coach. Maybe he'll come. This could also be a waste of time. <laughs> he might he also just might decline once again. So, yeah, it's a little. Uh, as I said, the coach system definitely needs some improvements here. 
And it's just all programming stuff, really. Like, why do they reject deals when in, like, the RFA period and then accept the same deals in free agent period? All right. He probably will decline that, but whatever. I'm trying one more time. If not, I'll just move on. He's now got another team interested in him, so likely will move on. All right. Players. We got Halak. Looks like we got Frolik as well. We got Gaunts. We're just waiting on Petro. Alandis Gog accepted the extension. And Petrangelo is on our team now. We give him a 4 by 10 deal. So I think that was it, right? Now we do. I do have other extensions that I kind of want to... I'm considering taking care of. Mainly Makar. Do you still want a King's Ransom? Nope. There we go. See? <laughs> Sometimes all you need to do is sim a few days. And now we can get Makar to an unbelievable deal. Wow. Yep, this is going to be great. Uh, so we can get it for 6.375 for eight years. Yep. Uh, lock him in. Gotta love the Avalanche and their team-friendly deals. Following McKinnon's lead. There we are. Eight years by that. That's a great price for uh for Makar. We're saving about three mil on him essentially, or at least two and a half that we would have been paying had we offered him the first one. So there you go. And that should be about it. We do have Grubauer. I'm I don't want to extend him yet. I'm not too sure. Got him and Halak. We'll see. Well, obviously Halak's kind of like a one-year guy. He is on 35. I probably will need Grubauer a bit more, but I don't need to extend him right now. I know some other people are saying, like, ah, go for Holtby and stuff. Eh, no need. You don't need a high 80s goalie when you could have a mid 80s goaltender and they sim better. So, why bother? <laughs> Knowing what I know about the sim engine this year really, really changes how I... Yeah, okay. <laughs> he didn't go for it. So, I'll probably, since we're done with everything else, right... I just want to see if McCarr will accept. Come on, bud. There we go. Yep. Kale McCarr accepted that extension. So I'm going to do the uh, coaching thing off screen because it's, it's just going to be boring for you guys just to watch me crank up numbers and stuff like that. So we're going to sim up. We're going to get the uh, lines taken care of. I'll send out the scouts. So yeah, I'll see you guys then. All right. So here are the lines for this coming year. We're going to try to stack top line. Landis Gog and McKinnon Ranton in the get plus three chemistry. Uh, second line, Donskoy, Kadri, and Frolik. Very gritty second line. Very two-way forward-esque. I don't know if we'll get enough scoring from them. We'll have to see. Um, obviously, Donskoy should get a bit of stat growth. Kadri's decent. Uh, Frolik, uh, hit or miss. Uh, we'll have to see if Jost grows, obviously. And uh, he might be uh, able to hop up there, and we can move down Frolik. Uh, but yeah, Wilson, Jost, Calvert, third line for now. Gantz, Belmar, and Comfer as the fourth line. Defensively, um, I've actually done a couple weird things here. Now, for the whole time, I was thinking Johnson was a lefty for some reason. He's a righty. So, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter too much. We're going to go double righty top unit with McCarr on the off, on the one-time side. Anyway, McCarr, Johnson, kind of like that. They get a plus three. If I had it like this, it's only plus one. So, I'll try it, I'll try it uh, this way. Then, Gerard Petrangelo. And we're going to, you know, kind of spread out the top four. So, like, you know, a better guy with a, you know, not so good guy instead of kind of stacking the top unit. Um, then Cole and Byram. Byram also in his off wing. But the thing I love about Byram, especially with this coach, look at that. He loves the top line. So, if I can get him and Makar together in the future, oh, that's a plus five between the two of them with this coach. So, I really like that. I really like that, and the reason I have Petro down here is because that's the only, really, place he's good. <laughs> so, there's that. Alright, uh, power play. Landis Gog, McKinnon, Rantanen with Gerard and Makar on the point. Second unit, Donskoy, Jost, Frolik, Kadri, and Petro. Uh, four-man, didn't really make any changes to that, because whatever. Uh, here's the penalty kill, Kadri, Comfer, Petro, Johnson, Belmar, Jost, uh, Makar and Coil. Gonna kind of play Makar everywhere. Um, get a minus here, but whatever. On the three man, hard hard to do anything better than that. Um, four and fours, McKinnon, Rantanen. Then the I think. Uh, oh yeah, no, I'm actually going with Petrangelo, Makar, and four on four. Uh, Kadri, Landis, Gog, Johnson, Gerard, Jost, Donskoy, Cole, Byram. 
Uh, three on three, same offensive stuff. Then we're going Makar, Petro, and Gerard. So there we go. Extra attackers, McKinnon, Makar. And there's your shootout lineup. And our goalies, Grubauer and Halak. Should be a good one-two punch. Yeah, apparently EA servers are down because my internet's fine. <laughs> uh, White and Zadorov as our depth, guys. Pretty tough to scratch Zadorov, I know, but, you know, give, give it some time. We uh, basically, hopefully, need Byam to get better. If he doesn't, I, I want to hold on to Zadorov, obviously, in case he doesn't jump and isn't ready for uh, top six. I mean, he should be, but we'll see what happens. If not, we can send him down. Snag a depth defenseman or call one up, although we don't have too much in the AHL. So, all right. There is that. And uh, actually, a really funny thing. The two scouts I got were Ron Hainsey and Henrik Zetterberg. I'm sure you guys probably know that and already commented on it, but I thought that was. I just noticed that when I was uh, getting all the assignments done. I, I got Heder Zetterberg and uh, Hainsey as, as our scouts. So. We got that going for us. All right, we're all set here. Captaincy still the same. Landis got captain. Nate Mack, an alternate. Johnson, an alternate. Johnson, obviously, probably not long for this team, so I have to think of another one. Landis Gog, though, is sticking around. I don't see any reason to trade him for a while. But this is a bit interesting. We do have kind of a, uh, a one-line team right now in some ways. We can, you know, make some moves like we did last year. We lose some chemistry, obviously. It's not the end of the world. But I want to see how if we if we can get carried by this top line. I want to see if that'll work. Especially with Makar up there. And then we're spreading some of the love defensively. I'm trying to just get us better shut down in a lot of other areas. So that's kind of the idea here. We'll see what happens. If we can improve the defense, we should be able to outscore our opponents most nights. So that's kind of the goal here. Let's get it started. I was going to say let's get it popping, but that sounds absolutely ridiculous. I'm 29 years old, but I'm still a kid, so it's okay. All right, up here. Let's go. <laughs> uh, Great. Bowen Byram got injured already. He's fully healed. He's good. Coach, you're going to come to me and tell him he needs a trial or no? You get off that. Well, we're doing really good in free. Uh, God damn. Preseason. Almost said free agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, we're all good. All right, our uh, scouts are assigned. Let's see, regular season starts now. We're starting with a back to back. We lose both of them by one goal. Not able to score a whole lot. Answer back with a win in the shootout. Not the way we wanted to start the season. Another loss to Winnipeg. One and three to start off. So here comes when you make your team better and you perform worse in the sim. Very typical of an EA game. Uh, Ratu, Clark. Yeah, we already know what Ratu is, but let's get scouting anyway. We're not getting hit with the uh, the glitch, so yay. Well, there's one. Nah, you don't know. He could actually be being scouted. We'll see if it lasts all freaking year. So wait, what the what, what they guess is going? We should definitely scout out this uh the top stuff here. We might just have a shit year. <laughs> it happens. You can have a great year and then you just turn around and are terrible. All right, you guys are seeing a few more of the uh, members here coming in. Oh, there's Mike D, MD. That's so it's, it trips me out so much to see that just MD. <laughs> um, okay, a lot of those guys. All right, let's just we'll leave the auto scout a bit. That I swear you there. He's a little elite. Now, obviously, I left the first initial, like, five or six members we had at their uh, potential. Didn't want to re-roll on them since we didn't really get far at it. We only got, like, to year two when we were doing the Buffalo thing. So. Which, yeah, I might, I might bring back that free agency GM mode thing. Some people are expressing more interest in it. It didn't seem that way. It didn't get a whole lot of uh, hype when I launched the series. Um... I think I'm going to try it on stream next, really get it fine-tuned, and then maybe I'll try to put it in video form again. But it's, it's, the thing about that one was it didn't, it wasn't that great for interaction. Like, people, like, you know, a lot of you guys are like, okay, well, we can't really interact because you're just going to sim an entire year. We just tell you about maybe free agents to go for, but yeah. So, I'll have to figure out maybe a better format. Why am I scouting that guy? 
But I definitely want it to be a quicker sim, obviously. We'll see. I don't know. I'll try to figure it out. Alrighty. Um, that's pretty much all we can scout for now. I might go back to the first round and scout a few more guys. Yeah. Seem, that seems like a kind of a good idea to do. Get a few more dudes scouted here in the first round. Just because we're not doing so hot early on. Obviously we can make changes and such. But I did want to see how we do with these uh these combinations. It might be it might be prudent to move Landis Gog down again, get Don Squay back onto the top line. It seems like that might be the case. But again, I want to I want to give him a chance. Give him a chance to get going. If it's not working, make make the switch. No big deal. But yeah, I'm gonna try to get almost this entire first uh first round just scouted a little bit. We don't have the best scouts, so I feel like I gotta direct them a bit more than perhaps normally when we get better scouting team together. But we have no A's right now. And mostly C's, so. Alright, there we go. Direct everyone. Micromanagement. This should this should be the only time we really have to do this though. But yeah, a lot of unknowns in here. All right, how oh, we know Sugar Girl's a uh, top six. Had, had him before. All right, that'll that'll do it for now. Continuing on, loss then a win, or a win then a loss. We're now 500 team. We're finding our offensive guns here. There we go. Tough loss right there. We get a point. Answer back with a win. We're above 500 now, but we're still kind of struggling to stay above. Uh, that's actually... Mm, never mind. That's not that good. Remove the picks and stuff. Ugh. Back to 500 we go. Well, we're not doing horrible. We're at least in fourth in the division, but... Froleek is leading in points. That's not a good sign if Froleek is your team leader in points. It seems like that first line is getting jack squat done, which is weird. Uh, 10 points. It's not horrible, but they're not they're not tearing it up by any means. Yeah, let's let's make the switch. I think I think we've got too much talent in one area. Yeah, we'll get less chemistry, but let's get Don Skoy up there. He's an 84 now. It's off to a good start with 10 points. Let's spread some of the love here. Jost, oh my god, Jost is an 84. I think I gotta move him up. I mean, how do I? Yeah, and I think he's gotta play wing. Can Froley? Froley cannot take face-offs. Calvert kinda can. Colin Wilson kinda can. I guess we'll have Calvert taking face-offs here. Ooh, oh my goodness, Belmar. Are you declining or why the hell are you a 76? Well, you're still really good defensively, so I don't really care. Yeah. All right, let's make that switch. Get Jost up into the top six. Triple lefty on that line, but it's okay. My God, Petro's a friggin' 79. And I got him down here. I do get less chemistry if I do that. These guys are minuses together. They're both two ways, so we're not... Oh, yeah. Byram's definitely ready, by the way. That's good for us. Good to know. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should... I'm going to keep them like this for now. I don't like the plus minuses of these guys, though. But I highly doubt it'd do much better with Johnson down there. So I'll leave him spread for now. Grubauer's doing poorly. Halak's doing okay. They're splitting time actually evenly, which I guess is okay for now. Okay, let's let's try that. Let's try this out. Again, try to spread some of the love here. Get ourselves back on the right foot. But uh, as of right now, not looking too tremendous. Not a good start. Let's continue on. We'll get to the first stat break. Kind of reassess from there. But yeah, it just goes to show you the naysayers out there. Oh my god, why'd you pick this team? First of all, I didn't pick them. It was voted. And it was going to be so boring. Like, it, it, weird sims happen. Like, point in case right now. We literally made this team visibly better. Visibly way better. And we're simming worse. 
So it's like, you got to take EA Sims with a grain of salt sometimes. It's that just because we had a good first year doesn't mean we're just going to be good the whole time and this will be boring. Besides, doesn't not everything has to be a rebuild, as I'm told every single time I do a rebuild. So yeah, no matter what you do, someone's going to have something negative to say about it. And my weakness is uh, I take it to heart and I want to make sure everyone likes what I'm doing, which is never, ever going to happen. But I still try my damnedest. Yeah, we just we just can't we can't uh, can't build on can't build on anything. We can't get the momentum going. We're suffering a lot of minor injuries here. We're battling through. We have not beaten Winnipeg once. They've beat us every single time. Shivryov's back. We had to put a defenseman in there. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I we're not keeping the puck out of the net. We're not scoring enough. It's just complete opposite, almost, of what we did last year, which is kind of which is kind of funny. We're below 500. We just lost a one nothing game, losing it in overtime. We're falling further back in the division. And I think I think we got a. We'll try a few more things here, but goodness gracious, why? Like, what what is the issue? Supposedly made our defense better. Kadri's leading in point, like. Last year, McKinnon ran and go off. This year, they're not doing anything. It, it trips me out. It's just weird. You know what I mean? It's just a little bit weird. So, stat break. We got to check it. I'm I'm afraid to check it, but we got we got to do it. What is the issue here? We're scoring a decent amount. We could, should be scoring more, but we're just allowing the way too many goals. Way too many goals. Power play is good. Okay, now it's time for the penalty penalty kill to be shit. Yeah, we're just, we're bad. <laughs> That's what happens, though. I think we're going to have to make some more changes here. Kadri Landskog doing fine. McKinnon, I mean, Rant Joseph's got as many points as Rantanen. Like, what? What is even happening? Donskoy, it's just bad. Petrangelo's a huge minus. I got it, yeah. We got to get Petrangelo, I guess, into the top pairing. Especially, he's probably going to be demoralized. Okay, he hasn't yet, so that's good for us. But we got I, we got to put him up there. Chemistry be damned. Like, we got to find ways to make this work. Gerard's doing poorly anyway. So, split up Makar and Johnson. See if that'll maybe help. I don't know. At least Cole and Byram are doing decently. So, we got that going for us. But goaltending-wise, holy hell. Both of them are trash cans. Yep, both of them are trashing. They're splitting time evenly, and neither of them are doing any any good. So that's fun. All right, time to take a look. Time to make some more changes here. Makar, twenty points. You're doing fine. Let's just make this switch. Get Petrangelo up there with Makar. Johnson looks like yeah, he's starting to decline. Damn it. Should probably think about moving him then if we can. Now's the time. Ugh. Yeah, let's we're gonna make that switch. I'm gonna leave this how it is because I kind of have to. I feel like I have to. What else can we do with these with the offense? I'm not splitting up McKinnon Renton, and that doesn't make any sense. But they're doing poorly together, so who the hell knows? Who knows? Now, Kamenev, I noticed that he was an 80 overall. It's a two-way forward. Question is, do I want to bring him up for any reason? He's listed as fourth liner. He would be technically better than Gons, but the fourth line isn't the issue here. The fourth line is far from the issue, so I'm not really worrying about that. The issue is we're not scoring enough, and our defense is absolute dog crap. So hopefully these changes bring something else about it. We're going to go another month, check out the growth, get ourselves up to the deadline, and just kind of roll with the punches, I guess, see what happens. If we're a bad team, we're a bad team. Try to load up on some more picks or get some higher quality picks. But good gracious, we cannot seem to get on the winning side of things here. We're just allowing too many goals. Way too many goals. Huh. 
<sighs> All right. Just kind of brainstorming. I'm like, why is it so much? I know we have a different coach, but he's technically better. <laughs> it's just, uh, who knows? Who knows? Sometimes it's not you. It's just the way the cards fall. It's just EA doing its thing. All right, let's focus on the lows here. Maybe next period I'll go back and check out that first round again if I feel like I need to, which I might do. But definitely want to look at some lows here. These guys are all around the area where they could be low elite, but many of these guys actually likely low top six and such. Because they're a little bit later than that second round. Most of them in the third. While they can still be low elites there, the high the high uh, traffic area for those low elites oftentimes is the second round. But still got to do the diligence. Probably scout a few of these guys just because why not? Come on. Stop menu lagging on me. Oh, that guy's, yeah, he's still real. Oh, who's the gem? Oh, he's a gem. Damn it. I was hoping this guy would have had the gem so I could be like, what? <laughs> How did I not notice that? <laughs> the hell? We got Ovi as a scout. That is amazing. All right, cool. A couple two ticks here. Gustav Jass. Too bad his last, his first name isn't Hugh. Hugh Jass, man. That would have been perfect. But no. You had to go and ruin it for me, didn't you, EA? You couldn't have given me this one thing. Plandowski. That's a real name. Larry Hall. That's not. All right. That should do it for now. Can we somehow find our legs here? Okay, that's a nice sh shutout win. Low top six, you want... No, 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 no. I like him. He's a pretty good role player. What is, what's going on here? Can I just... First of all, you have Bowers on the block, which is how dare you put Shane Bowers on my trade block. And they got picks on the block. The way things are going, man, we don't want to give up picks. <laughs> Definitely not. We don't want to do that. Let's continue on here. There we go. A couple wins. We're at 500. We lose in the shootout again. Okay, now we're above 500. This could be a good month. Okay, we're starting to turn things around here. This is a huge month for us. Got a point streak going right now. Okay, we just ended it against Dallas. But that was a nice little point streak. That got us back on the right side of things. And we're now in a playoff position. So it could, just like that, it could change. Ryan Graves, model concussion. That's the... Uh, yeah, these dudes. I'm just going to shove this guy and he'll be back in like two days. All right, continuing on here. Nice, another win. Just like that, we're six games above 500. All it takes is a good month. Another mild concussion because that's the only injury in existence. But just goes to show you, player safety, still not doing their fucking jobs. Excuse my language. <laughs> Confer plus five with ten points. Kind of don't want to split that lineup. We'll give Ryan White some decent ice time here on that. On that, this third line, very very defensive. Very defensive bottom six as well. You could argue it usually should be. I do like sometimes. I li I do like kind of having a hybrid third line. So third lines I can score and shut down. And as you can see this year, we're not doing a whole lot of shutting down. All right, tough loss right there, but 21, 16, and 4, we're in much better shape. We put ourselves into a playoff position with that good month. Now Nate Mack is leading the team in points, so there we have it. 46 points on the year. We are two points ahead of a wild card, one point ahead of the other, so we're not safe by any means. We did secure third in our division, but we're, uh, we're yeah, like I said, not safe by any means. Let's check out the growth here. See what's going down. Okay. Don Skoy. Ugh, he's only got 25 points. 
want him to be able to maintain that stat growth if we can or build on it, but it's not looking too good right now. Belmar. Oh, he's got stat minus? What? Why the hell does Belmar have stat minus? Like, what? He's a fourth liner, for God's sakes. That's really weird. Makar. Damn, no natural. That's all statistical pluses. But it's not too much. All right, growth here. Speaking of growth, uh, I don't see any from uh, ba uh, Byram, which kind of sucks. But he's very young. Oh, this is good. Both of our goalies are growing. <laughs> That's huge. Askarov is up to a 64 now. It's not growing a whole lot, but he's up there. Yeah, pfft, both goals are growing. I don't care. Myzik's growing. No one else has really grown too much. Holtz is growing a little bit, so just going to leave him there. He should. He's listed as depth. It's very... I could, yeah, I could play MHL. I could sign him play MHL. But at this point, I might as well just leave him off. I know some people were suggesting that I sign him. But I think if he plays AHL, it'll burn a year of his entry level. And I don't want to do that. Got to think ahead of the future. He is only 18. He'll be 80 overall in no time. He'll still be good. He'll still be solid. All right. Could use not a whole lot of growth so far. But we don't have a whole lot of top prospects yet. So... Bear that in mind. Don't judge too harshly. We're at least getting the first line going more now, which is huge. Um, I'm going to keep it going because these lines seem to be doing better. I'm going to just go up to the deadline, then I'll check the stats. I don't want to jinx myself and second-guess my decision and want to change things if I look at something that's out of place. Let's just give it a larger sample size here. Go up towards the deadline. Hope that we, If we obviously struggle, I'll have to make some changes, but... Let's keep it up. Let's keep it going here. Frolik is back. Good for us. How'd Ryan White do in the few games he got? Uh, two games. Or sorry, three games minus three. Yeah, that's not good. Frolik back. Third line's kind of struggling. Again, it's not a great third line. But, uh, yeah. All right, keep her going. All right, there we go. We answered back with a... When we lose, I definitely want to answer back with a win. We get a point out of that one, but we get, we need two points here. We're not we're not in a safe position where, you know, point works and we can escape with it. No, no, no. We need two points in a lot of these matchups. That's These are tough losses. These are tough losses. Oh, my God. Now we're not doing good again. Ugh. We had a good stretch, and then all of a sudden didn't make any changes. We're just back to shit in the bed. Not what we want. Let's continue to scout this first round because it's still looking like might not be doing too well. Yeah, everyone I see that's in this first round, pretty much gonna scout here. Yeah, I know Sugar's a top six, but Ugh, I hate when I hate when my better scouts listed second. That's very annoying. All right, same. <laughs> Hopefully that'll be optimized better as we start getting our scouting pool. I'll right, we'll just leave those guys down to the lows we go. All right, we got a couple three ticks here, very close. One of them we already know is a low elite. Uh, Kultanen has a pretty good chance. Mathurin has a really, really good chance. Anthony Mathurin. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's another, uh, <laughs> why does it say low? I don't think I made him a low. Interesting. Uh, anyway, that's another, uh, a member, as I was trying to say. Stumbling over my own words here. I don't remember him being a low, whatever. Scout him. All right. Um, ooh, a bunch of top sixes. That's good for us. Really looking good. I'm just going to keep scouting here because this is uh, this could be a pretty big year for drafting for us again. I mean, all of them are going to be pretty big. We only have nine picks each year. Got to get some prospects early here, either for trade value or for actually, you know, serviceable dudes. This guy's still within range, still has a chance. 
Not you. I might as well scout this guy, even though it's way far back and probably won't be anything. He's there and it's bothering me. Duke is being scouted. Don't really need to worry about goaltenders, but there's a Polish guy in here. His last name is Quirk, which is incredible. So let's do it anyway. All right, let's look for a couple, a few two tick nines. There we go, plenty. And that should just about do it. Okay. So hopefully our scouts get a lot more information. Because we might need it. We might need it. We just lost one, two, three, four games in a row. And many out of our last stretch. So there's a win. Hopefully just a bad stretch. We answered with a couple wins. Still hanging in there. We're in a wild card spot. Now Connaughton's got a mild concussion. Why not? At least it's a... Uh, AHL. All right, now we're back to winning. So it was maybe just a bad stretch there. We're now second in the division somehow. Very weak division. Insanely weak central. That's that's one thing we got going for us. The central is extremely weak. So that's a good thing. Which means that trading with Pacific teams for picks would give us a pretty good chance to get something good. There is a huge trade. <laughs> Not bad. All right. Oh, they traded Brink for Stahl. Oh, you stupid idiots. How do you trade Brink? Stupid idiots, Philly. I mean, they did get Eric Stahl, but like, come on, man. Bobby Brink. All right, Zaitsev going to Detroit with a third, and they get a couple seconds back. Uh, Moran on waivers. Look at those beady, lifeless eyes. That's another. That's another freaking Elder Scrolls NPC right there. Have you tried mercenary work? Might suit you. Hmm. Hmm. I'm actually almost considering snagging him. He might be solid future depth. I'm going to claim him, actually. Give me him. Let's stop simulation. Um, no thanks. No one wants Pouliot. All right, um... Yeah, let me uh, let me check out what Moran is if you got put on. We got 78 chemistry now, locker room chemistry, looking good. Did he get put here or no? So he's in the AHL good. Let me let me shove him in somewhere that I don't need. Like I don't need to have Barbario playing. Let's put in that Moran guy. Yeah. Um all it's done growing. I could put Barbario in here. Might even fix some of the chemistry. Yep. Cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, I got him because he's 25. I don't know his potential or anything like that, but his shot blocking stick checking looked really good. And depending on his awareness, we're at least going to see. You know? We'll at least see what's, what's going on with that. All right. Continuing on here. Landeskog now leading in points with 62. We're second in the division. Almost up to the deadline here. Just four more games. Well, technically five, but we're only doing four. Tough loss right there. Come on, answer back. Answer back with dubs. God damn it. In inconsistent! We're so inconsistent, man. So friggin' inconsistent. Ugh. 32, 24, and 6. Like, we're, we're going to be a playoff team regardless, but the inconsistency of our offense is really bothering me. Like, it's really, really... I mean, McKinnon and Lan and Rantanen just had a tremendous year. Then they come back here, same lines, and do absolute trash. It's it's very weird. 
But it is what it is, I guess. Landeskog is our leading point guy on the second line. So, still not scoring enough. We should be scoring way more. Uh, maybe not. I mean, we don't have maybe a lot of depth. And if, But we do have a... Yeah, maybe not. Defense, at least, has gotten better from absolute dog crap. So, that's good. Uh, penalty kill got better. Power play, okay. Yeah, not just not a good year. Just not really an outstanding year, which kind of makes sense given the team. This is the year you expect out of this team. But after last year, you kind of got your hopes up. McKinnon's still point per game, but well, well below the pace he was on last year. And the first line are hovering above even and minus, which is interesting. Don Skoy, not even going to hit 50. Like, he's not doing anything. Which kind of sucks. He'll probably lose that stat growth. Which is obviously not what you want. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's not where we need it. Petrangelo and Makar... Petrangelo is actually beating McCarr in points. Not what I expected to happen, but I'll take him whenever I can. That's the reason I wanted him split up was so that, you know, get better production. But that was not working when we had it. Okay, both goalies doing better now. They just got nine. Okay, and we figured out that Grubauer should be getting more starts. And, yeah. I think they're splitting him so evenly in the beginning because they're – neither one of them was doing fantastic. But now Grubauer is doing a lot better. He's a late bloomer. And Byram's having a decent rookie year. Still hasn't grown, which is a, uh, but he's 19 at 80, so he's he's already in good shape. But yeah, here we are. Um, it's kind of what you expect the record out of this team. Last year, definitely more of a fluke, especially in the playoffs. But what wasn't a fluke is McKinnon ranting and tearing it up on the scoring sheet. They're not doing that this year, which is kind of sucky. Considering Jost up there, I could try to move. Okay, yeah, no, that won't work. We could try Jost on that top line. He's got better offensive stats. It also might be because we have two point producing guys here that Donsko is not producing as well. Like, that's the thing. Okay, well, Makar's up to an 89, so he's still growing. <laughs> Makar is doing beautifully. So that's 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 another silver lining. Makar is growing like a boss, and we have him after this year to an incredible team-friendly extension. So we got that going for us still. And yeah, I mean, we're still we're still making it work. Fourth line are pluses, which is great. Third line is the is the sore spot as a line. But don't know what else to do about that. Now the question is at the deadline. Do we have assets to make this team better? You could argue we should capitalize on Don Scoy's trade value. And try to pick up someone who's who's better and, you know. But, I don't know. Let's see. Let's just see. What's on trade blocks right now? Wow. Chicago's trying to get rid of younger guys. Yep, Columbus is full rebuild. Let's just see how much value Donskoy has. Decent chunk. And they get all... Uh, mm, huh. Oh, interesting. All right, well, I'm just thinking what... If we were going to make a trade, what it would be, who it would be for. We 
could definitely shift up at the draft, but we don't have to. We don't really have the tools to do that now. I'll definitely try to shift up for an elite if I could target one. Uh, no guarantee on that. Trading for a pick right now doesn't make a whole lot of sense because most of our assets. I mean, we could use like Mizek or something like that. Um, theoretically, though, you might want to wait on him, but he has a pl he has a sniper, top six. Like, how good is he gonna get? You could package him with Don Scoy to get a good rental, or you could save him. Yeah, who knows? Zadorov's not having fun. He hasn't got to play at all. No injuries. Yeah, I'm not too sure. But in the way of... Uh, I think where I'd want to go is a forward, obviously. Dubinsky, Saad, like these aren't really big improvements. Pavelski wouldn't be bad, but they don't want to give him up, and he's got two years left. Now would not be the time. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of rental potential around the league by the looks of it. And we kind of have to deal with blocks too. That's the thing. We're in that we're in a position where we kind of need blocks to match. And there's not a whole lot of help. Well, there's a Nisimov. But we don't know too much about him. I don't think he's that good. Yeah, there's just not a whole lot. Rentals or otherwise. I mean, there's Stastny. That's a that's an option, but not a very amazing option. So I am not. Oh, ooh, wait a sec. Guess laugh. But cap wise, we'd have to probably get him to retain. They have the our exact record. That is an option, though, Getzlaff. That would be a decent capitalization of Don Skoy's value for now, because he'll likely use lose this stat, uh, stat growth after this year. So that's an idea going for someone like Getzlaff. I didn't check these guys in full because I kind of skipped over them. I was just looking at the block on the side of the screen. But other than that, yeah, that's it. That's about it, yeah. These guys, for some reason, wanting to get rid of Nylander, Strom. We don't have the value to really pursue those guys. Getzlaff is the best option here if we were to go for a pure rental. And he wouldn't be too bad. Wouldn't be too bad. Value-wise, we'd have to obviously ship out Donskoy here. Who's more worth his cap now, but they don't want Donskoy. We'd still be over the cap. We'd have, honestly have to get him retained. We'd have to throw something else in there. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? That's the big question. I don't know. That's It's a tough call. So uh, let me know what you guys think about the, our trade deadline options. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you in the next one.